Hey guys, uh, welcome back to my channel. So I have another interesting video. Uh, this is uh, a 2018 Tesla Model 3. This is one of my uh, subscribers from YouTube. Uh, he brought the car. He lives uh, locally here in Virginia. So he brought the car up because he wants to put some uh, performance uh, brakes on it. So I saw what he got and I wanted to record it. So I see, you know, because it's very a big change on the way the car will handle and also the way the car will look. So I want to share this with you guys and hopefully it's going to be an interesting video. So let me just uh, set up the car and the hoist and I will show you what rotors and what brake he got. All right, I'll be right back guys. They're very nice. So, uh, I was reading the information. Let me actually put you guys in the in the camera. So you guys can see better. I don't have to be shaking so much. <laughs> I mean, on the tripod, but not on the camera. All right, so this is uh, very good quality uh, performance stuff. Uh, you can get the, these are high performance uh, rotors. They're di uh, directional, so we will be careful with that. I mean, there is always some paperwork for that, but I mean, they look beautiful. This is going to increase the braking power a lot. He also got, which is uh, not really normal with this system, but he got the the uh, splash shield or dust shield from the rotor itself. So they got, oh, he got these ones. They're not the ones in the car, obviously. They remove the lift that goes outside. Hopefully we can install this one without hitting the rotor. I got to take a look at that. And he got the brake pads for this too as well. All from the same company. And I'm gonna show you because with these ones, you need to put a bracket. Uh, so we got all the front pads in here. Very good quality pads as, as well. And the brackets extensions that we need to put in order to make the caliper uh, reset a little bit backward because the rotor is bigger but we will see that on the process of the video i also have for all the uh sorry for all the torque specifications and everything i already have all the information so i'm ready with the uh these are the fronts i mean here we got all, all the brakes but let me scroll down so brake caliber right rear so they do it from the sports brakes rear sport brakes so we have a whole bunch of different uh, setups the most important stuff that we're looking at here since we're not going to be reusing the original brakes it's just a torque so brake caliper front I mean, remove and install is a very easy sequence for, for sure. They give you even the tools that you need and the E18 torques. The lifting of the vehicle. And that's the torque. So we have so new bolts to attach the left front brake caliper to the knuckle and torque at 94 Newton meters. That's the hose torque and that's it I mean so it's 94 Newton meters that's pretty much what we need very nice information show because everything is in nice and color with a lot of links and very very easy to understand for uh, for, for anybody right okay so let me keep going with the car I'll be right back guys all right let's get the wheels out I know I'm a little bit on the way right now, but it's just because I'm taking the wheel, which is not that important for the video.
Let's stop it to see the angle. I decide to change the angle just a little bit so we get a better look of what I'm doing. Yeah. Perfect. So these are just the push pins. Very normal uh, setup for high end vehicles to have, you know, pin through the caliper uh, is the best and more secure system for braking. A 10 millimeter to hold the rotor. And as you can see, I mean, the brakes are brand new. So he's not doing the brakes because he's this, you know, he needs it. Uh, it's because he wants to have the performance uh, brakes on it. And he was able to uh, find everything for the front. Not sure if we have everything yet for the back. But we do have the rotors, which is what he wants to stall this time. Pin is a little tight. This, this one. All right. And that's... That's the way the pins lock. Oh, look, we're going to clean all this to make sure it's like brand new. I mean, it's definitely not rust on this vehicle at all. This is just a spring to keep the pads separated a little bit. All right, we need to remove this. Sorry. I put the clamp too, too quick. And we might not need it. Not for this one, because we need to make sure that we can uh, push just a little bit. I like to do this so the brake pads come out easy. I'm going to show you in a second what I'm doing, but you can see now that the rotor has play. And the pads come very easy. So what I usually do is I go with a screwdriver like this so it's no mark and then you just slightly push the pistons a little backwards so we can get the the pads without you know damaging anything out especially now there you know this is brand new stuff brake pads are all in good shape brembo brakes so definitely good good pads as well All right, so this should be an A18 or E18. Let me get that Torx. It's a reverse Torx, which is the socket one, right? And on this case, we don't really care uh, of the torque because we're removing, right? One thing that we might need to do is also uh, relocate the clamp on the hose because of the way now the caliper is going to be reset a little bit, the hose is not going to reach, but uh, the good thing for this clamp is not pressed into the hose, it's just holding the hose, so it's, it's easy to, to move. And this is a 10 millimeter, just to, re to release the clamp. And this is the clamp that I'm talking about. So we're just going to have to wiggle it back just a little bit around, you know, three eighths, quarter of an inch. I think that's what all we're going to need. Always have to have a hook ready. I know it's not much to see here, but you know, these are just fasteners. Very lightweight materials for sure. 
Now what I like to do, I just hang in this in here so the caliper is not being hauled by the hose. Very important. Now we need to remove this shield and that's what I wanted to show you, the ones he has. So we got these shields, but you see this slip in here? Now it's, it's, it's gone. So we'll see if that works. Hopefully everything has, is as it should in here. Always do, very important to remove any light rust that we might have here. So the new rotor sits in place. And I like to also to apply just a slight coat of uh, anti-seize. I like to use the one, it's like a copper color. And don't apply that one until you're about to install, otherwise it gets messy in your hands. It looks like T30. Mm -hmm. No room for a big uh, cordless ratchet in there, so we're just going to use a, a hand ratchet. Like to lose all and then take it apart. I mean, it's barely even dust, brake dust in here. No room for any cordless, so it's got to be done by hand. I'm going to show you one of the front ones and one of the rear ones. Because, I mean, the other side is just going to be exactly the same situation. No need to record twice the same, right? And I will obviously uh, take a, a short video at the end with everything installed so you see the look. I mean, it's definitely going to be an impressive change. Are we gonna dust shield off? I need to compress completely the pistons on the caliper. And for that, we're gonna use this tool. I like this one. I got it from a snap on. It's a specific for uh, these type of brake systems. So we can get the hook in here. I mean, truly, these pistons are all the way in this uh, caliper pass. They were brand new. I think uh, I'm going in. Again, it was just a maybe, a, I don't know, not even an eighth of an inch. But yeah, they reset completely all the way in. Perfect. We're gonna put the caliper back in there. And we need to wash the calipers, get, get rid of that break dust that we have there. For that, use a, a brass brush so it's not scratching on the surface of the caliper. And this is this is the area you need to clean, this bottom and top. I like to clean the entire caliper, obviously, but you need to just make sure that this, this is where the, cal, uh, the brake pad is going to slide in and out every time you brake. So you need, you, need make sure, you need to make sure that that is clean. But you also don't want to, you know, to do any uh, scratches in there. 
because that will also create a dragon on the on the brick bed. It's always a little harder to work with a camera on. I gotta be careful not to knock you guys down. And also that I'm able to work. Just trying to turn around so I can clean the other side. You guys can see a little bit too. Only because of the video. <laughs> oh, now what I put the brush right here. Mm -hmm. I mean, this calipers and everything is it's like brand new, so it's not really much to clean in here. But this is this is what you do. This is what you need to do. And this is what I do in all breaks, not just on these ones, on every single break. Make sure that all the mating surfaces are clean. All right, that's pretty much what we need to do with that. Now let's get these brackets out. So these are the extension brackets that we're gonna need in there to reset the rotor. Uh, I found the sheets of information, so this is just the way rotational. So it looks like it's yeah, the rotation will put the uh, slotted that way. That's that's all. Okay. So, so we have the one for the other side here. So again, as you can see, this is the rotation. So this will rotate this way. So this gotta be facing forward. That's it. That's all the rotational stuff we need. Hmm. Ah, oh, well, that's pretty easy. It's also marked right. I didn't see that in the other tech. We need to put the light coat that I was referring to of anti seize. This is pretty much, it will also prevent our rust and it will also prevent the rotor to stick to the hub and the wheel on the hub as well. So yeah, again, it's just a slight coat. That's all you need to do. Wanna see how this looks before the heat shield or a splash shield. Okay, so we got a problem in here. These uh, heat shields or splash shields or whatever you call, uh, call these ones are not um, the same as these open. So I'm going to try to mark them and cut them and see if they work. Uh, he wants me to do that, so we'll see. Uh, we'll stop the video and I'll be right back. I got the one shield cut. Again, this is the flat one with no um, with no leap here. Hopefully this is going to work. I marked the same uh, form from the original. I'm just trying to take any chart pages out 
for anyone that works in here, you know, after me. Because one thing I complain always is <laughs> what engineers uh, think when they design a vehicle. Sometimes it's not even a room for you to to get your hands on, or they put you know very sharp uh, brackets around that cannot be removed. So yeah, they don't really think too much on the on the next guy. They're like, oh yeah, that looks good. Uh, yeah, I installed the whole engine and transmission together, so I don't care about the next one. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to put this one. That's going to take a temporary, but let's let's just you know put it on because I have to put the um, the bracket that goes here. I need to install the caliper to make sure that nothing hits on here because as far as uh, anyone else. Uh, this uh, heat shield, or not heat shield, I keep saying heat shield, it's not a heat shield. This dust shield is, is removed, it's discarded. But now him, he wants to install it, so that's why we are doing it. But we'll see. I think that probably some people already tried this and didn't work. We don't know. Because by putting that bracket in here, I'm not sure if I'm going to have enough room. So let me not, not tie this up completely. As far as suspension on the Tesla, it's very basic, nothing that I said, wow, this is a new technology, not at all. Uh. Okay. This should be the same. I know what I'm doing wrong. First of all, let's remove this ball that provide with the bracket because this is the mounting, the mounting ones. So, uh, looks good. But we might not be having a problem in here. One of the washer is a little tight to go in. Come on. Just a washer for the bolt itself. I made it too tight. All right, good. Am I going to have to file that one a little bit? Let's, let's see. Let me get the other one out. Yeah, I know what happened. He opened the bag, obviously, to see what he got in there. That's what I dropped. The first one it was a, an open bag. And I couldn't find instructions because he opened the other ones too. I mean, obviously, that's his car, right? I would have done the same thing. I want to be the first. <laughs> All right, so those bolts are 10. This on an Allen hexagonal wrench. Oh no, it's going in. We get the torque wrench. 
So we said, what was the tide spec? Uh, let's see. 94 Newton meters. That's not even much. I'm just playing around, putting the batteries on my torque wrench. <clears throat> it's a digital one. I never leave the batteries on. Any electronics you don't use too often. And even if you do use it often, <clears throat> sorry, just get the uh, batteries out. Like that, if they leak, they will not destroy your electronics. <clears throat> All right, 94. I'm just setting this one to 94 Newton meters. Hopefully, you guys can see something because now I got the sun on this side. How's that better, right? Okay, so just 94. Oop. <clears throat> so far, it's looking good. I think that shield my my work. All right. You know what? I'm going to tie those because if it works, I don't need to remove it. Talking about this torque, 230. The T is when it's a tip, and the E is when it's a socket. And I'll always make sure we got the right one here. Remember this? Facing forward. All right, guys, a good advice, just leave the key in the center console. You know that credit card key, leave it in, in the center console so the alarm will not come on because it is annoying. I like to put one of the nuts in here so it holds the rotor uh, straight. I need to clean these pins just one second. I got a, a wire brush and, and one of my uh, drills in here for minor things. I also have another wire uh, wheel on on a bench, but that is not necessary for this one. Especially these pins are very clean. I mean, 2018, right? One only thing I don't uh, see here on this uh, setup is any of the pins for the brake pads, not on the rotor, let's say, you know, the brake pads uh, itself. Usually the good kids, they come with these new pins, new, and a lot of the, you know, hardware you need to replace. I mean, this is a 2018, so you don't really need to replace it now, but along the way, you will. All right, so let's see how this is going to look. Hopefully I'm not too much in your way. Just gonna grab one of the bolts. Ouch. I think it's pretty good. I see a lot of, a lot of room between the, the dust shield, the rotor, 
and on the caliper I'm going to show you in a second <clears throat> let me tie that up too Like the snugged with the cordless, and then use the torque wrench. Yeah, all the clearances looks really good. All right. All right. Perfect. We we'll take the camera off the tripod and show you guys what I'm talking about and what I'm seeing as far as that shield. So I think he did the right call. So hopefully you guys can see. Uh, let me get the camera. Okay, see how much room we got. So there's plenty of room. And the cutouts that I did for here is also perfect. I haven't put the, the hose yet. Just want to show you the upper part. That looks pretty good. Let's go over the front side. Yeah. So there's plenty of room. And that will, I like the idea of what he did because that uh, dust shield will prevent any foreign objects to get in, in there, right? So it is, it is very good that he did that. All right, so that works out very well. Now let's take a look at this hose. I think the car is a little too high for me. I have to lower it and raise it up because of the alarm. I mean, this is loud. <laughs> yeah, that's actually... Pretty good. I can give. Let me see. You don't want to. You don't want to give too much here because remember the wheel will will turn. So just enough for the ball to be attached without. Yeah, that's plenty. So I would say three eighths, three eighths of an inch setback for the. And this is for the rotor, actually the same length. And this rotor does not have a hole for the mounting uh, bolt that holds the rotor in place. It's not really important. That is mostly what I'm doing here with the, with the nut. But it's, you know, it's nice to have it so you can install the brake pads and everything without, you know, a wiggling, a wiggling rudder. Perfect. And it's very strong. You know, the way they designed that shield, it's very, very sturdy. Not, fl not floppy. All right, where's the brake pads? I got it on my cart. I need to put some. Lubricant on that uh, brake caliper. Oops, you guys are very uh, high, right? <laughs> I just apply a light coat. And this is pretty much what uh, Maseratis and, and uh, Porch do. This will help slide. And this, I mean, again, this, these rotors are, up in calipers are brand new. So not really that bad. If you touch the rotor, like I did here, yes, you know, move it around. Clean up the 
spot where you touch it with the anti-seize. Yeah, this got no warning. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So little things that I noticed, but I mean, these are different brake pads. The Brembo, they got a warning, so you will hear a little bit of a scratching before they actually hit the rotors. But this one, they don't have that. So that's the only difference I can see. I also like to apply a little bit on the back for the pistons, so no noise on the first on the first miles of braking. That will pretty much dissipate with 200 miles, but. It's always good to have a little bit of that in there. See, when everything is clean, it's pretty easy to get in. We got the hammer. Right, and I use this one from a snap on I like the quality of the snap on one. This is a 530 seconds. These uh, pins are really, really strong. I haven't been able to damage one. And I use it very often. Hopefully if my light is hitting the camera, but I need to see what I'm doing in here. I mean, the rotor's moving a little bit because this is tied by hand, but yeah, this is perfect. I like it. And it looks really, really neat. Remember, facing forward, not like this because it will be the opposite side, but this one has a sticker or a tag which shows you left and right. And so, but that's how you do the front high performance brake on a 2018 Tesla. I'm going to move to the back so we can see that, but actually, I might want to do two separate videos. So this is going to be the front, and I'm going to do another one with the rear ones. Okay, guys? I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.